كتب ربه على نفسي. This is literal translation. What does this mean? Your Rabb made fault, made compulsory على نفسه upon himself. What can be fard on Allah? What can be compulsory on Allah? Allah Zat لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. No one questions Allah. Allah will do the question. Allah's authority is such. وَلَهُ الْكِبْرِيَاءُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Authority, kibr, in the heavens and the earth, only belongs to Allah. Yet, yet Allah is saying, this is literal translation. كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ Allah made something farz upon himself. What? كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ Allah made obligatory upon Himself rahmat, mercy, compassion, kindness, rahmati, wasi'at, kulla shay. Allah says, My rahmat, my mercy encompasses every facet of this creation. If you look in Quran and Hadith, my respected brothers, wallah, it appears as if Allah is just looking for some excuse to make our mafia. This season that we have entered into. Rajab, Shaban, this is a season. When Rajab would start, Rasulullah would make dua. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajabin wa Shaban. Wa balligna Ramadan. Oh Allah, bless us. Oh Allah, give us barakah. Oh Allah, bless us in the months of Rajab and Shaban. وَبَلِّغْنَا رَمَضَانِ And cause us to remain alive, to experience Sayyidu Shuhur, the leader of the months of the Islamic calendar. شَهْرُ الرَّحْمَةِ شَهْرُ التَّوْبَةِ شَهْرُ الْغُفْرَانِ شَهْرُ الْقُرْآنِ شَهْرُ الدُّعَاءِ شَهْرُ الْإِنَابَةِ شَهْرُ الْعِدْقِ مِنَ النِّيرَانِ The month of Allah's mercy. The month of Allah's forgiveness, the month of Allah's compassion, the month of the acceptance of dua, the month of emancipation from the, from the fire of hell, the month of Allah's forgiveness, the month to turn to Allah, the month of the Quran. What is this? A season, a chance, an opportunity Allah is giving. It's almost as if Allah is looking for some excuse to make the maghfirat. One riwayat it comes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person was walking. He saw something on this on the road. He saw a branch. He saw a branch on the road. So he said, Let me move this. Why? Because it is possible this causes taklif to the people. On this one act, Allah's Rasul says, on this one act, tomorrow Allah will make the decision of the maghfirat of this. Dawud alayhi salam, mm. once he asked Allah Ta'ala, Ya Allah, he had heard of the Mizan, where Allah says, وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا Quran speaks of Allah's Mizan. The hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describes the magnificence and the size and the magnanimity and the proportion of this creation of Allah, the mizan, the scale of justice. Dawud alayhi salam, once he makes dua to Allah, Ya Allah, show me this mizan, show me the scale. Allah reveals it to him. The size of it is such, the gigantic proportion, it blots out the entire east to west for Ghushiya alayhi. Dawud alayhi salam, when he sees this, he falls down unconscious. When he recovers, when he opens up his eyes, he says to Allah, Ya Allah, how is it even going to be possible? Kayfa mala ahadun, hadihil kifa, such a large scale. How is anyone ever going to be able to fill it with good deeds? How is anyone going to be able to fill it with fill it with good deeds? Allah Ta'ala says to Dawud alayhi salam, O Dawud, do not worry. Lo raditu ala abdihi lamalatuha bi tamara. If I become happy with my slave, even if he spends one date in my path, I will make that one date fill this entire visa. Such is the mercy of Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Dakhala rajulun al-jannah. 
دخل رجل الجنة. Look at this hadith, literature, even if you don't understand Arabic. The Beast Lazim is speaking of who in this hadith? He's speaking of a jannati. دخل رجل الجنة. This man is a jannati, referring to someone from the previous ummah. Before the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us of a person. دَخَلَ رَجُلٌ الْجَنَّةِ He is a jannati. Now if you put your hand over the rest of the hadith, block the words out. You're listening. دَخَلَ رَجُلٌ الْجَنَّةِ This man is a jannati. So what would you expect in the rest of the hadith? Some great ibadat, some great act of worship, some great sacrifice. Some great mujahada this man did. That Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is speaking about him from the previous ummah. And he's saying this man is a jannati. So what did he do? What did he do? Take your hand. Now move your hand away. And look at the words of the hadith. And completely contrary to logic. What does Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Ma amila khayran qat. Those who understand Arabic, this is emphasis upon emphasis upon emphasis. Ma is nafia, which means to negate. Ma amila khayran, and then qattu. Qattu in Arabic is to, like you place a seal, you take a hammer, you, you, you overemphasize something. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, this man ent will enter into Jannah, he did not for his entire life do a single good deed. Ma amila khayran qat. Never did one good deed. Not one tasbih, not one act of charity, not one turakat salah. This is ma amila khayran qat. This is what he means. Didn't do a single good deed. Qala li ali hina hadaruhu al-wafat. The time of his moth came. Now Dastan, legacy of a life of ghaflat, a life of masiyat, a life of Allah's isyan to such an extent that Rasulullah is saying this man, there was not one good deed he did. Now death is staring him in the face. Desperate, absolutely desperate. Can't turn the clock back. This is Allah's sunnah. Allah's sunnah, it will not change. Allah says, when the mort comes, when death comes, no ta'khir. There is a promised time. We have not come to live in this world, come out of this ghaflat. Understand, my respected brothers, not you, not I have come to live in this world. We have come to die. That is the reality of life. 100 years from now, 100 years ago, not one of us was here. 100 years from now, not one of us will be here. 100 years ago, the world was running. Today it is running. 100 years from now, if Allah doesn't decide Qiyamah, it will still be running. We were not here, now we are here, then we won't be here. So come out of this deception that this world needs you or I to run. We are just fooling ourselves that we are integral and we have to be there and I have to do future planning and I have to do this and I have to do that. The reality, Antumul in Allah. Every one of you is a faqir, beggar, useless, bankrupt before Allah. No makhluk is integral to the running of this affair running of this world. It is Allah's hakimiyat, Allah's hukumiyat, Allah's samadiyat, Allah's jabariyat that is muhid, that encompasses every facet of this creation. All of us, we are in a waiting station. This is a passing phase. No one has come to live, we have come to die. And when that time comes, like the poet says, وَإِذَا الْمَنِيَّةُ أَنْشَبَتْ أَبْفَارَهَا when mort and death bears its claws. Like sometimes you hear people, Pagal Pana, they call this the foolishness of insan's intoxication with the nasha of this world. You become so intoxicated that you hear statements like this. I, I was saved from the jaws of death. 
I was saved from the jaws of death. I was lucky. I got saved. There is no such thing as being saved from the jaws of death. When mort and death bears its claws, when that time comes, like Ali radiallahu ta'ala used to say, Al mawt laysa minhu al fawt. Al mawt laysa minhu al fawt. In faramtum minhu akhada. In aqamtum lahu akhada kum. Wa in faramtum minhu adraka kum. If you oppose it, it will overpower you. If you run from it, it will find you. Like Quran says, "Aina ma takunu yudrikum al maut, walau kuntum fi burujim mushayyada." Allah says, "Run, run, hide as much as you want, build a huge fortress. But wherever you are, whoever you are, on its appointed time, that moth and death will come." الفيت كل تميمة لا تنفع لا يؤخر الله نفسا إذا جاء أجلها. When more than death comes, there is no turning the clock back. There is no second chance. There is. Other day, someone said such a beautiful thing. He said the people were gathered around one mayit at the kabrastan. The mayit was being lowered into the ground. At that time, one person decided to give nasihat and advice, and he said. That brothers, I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. If this mayyit is told now that Allah has given you an opportunity, you are going to be brought to life. You have 24 hours. You are going to be brought to life. Listen to this. You are going to be brought to life. You have 24 hours. What do you think this man will do? Ask anybody, there's 50 people, 100 people gathered at the graveyard. The mayor is in front of them. Bring him to life for 24 hours. What do you think he will do for the next 24 hours? Answer will be the same, similar. I'll be in the masjid. I'll sort out my financial affairs. Those whose hukuka ate up, I will ask them for maaf. I'll try and pay them back. I'll get my affairs in order. I'll, I'll be involved in tilawat of Quran. I'll make zikr of Allah, I'll start preparing for cover and akhirat, I'll make tawbah. The list will go on. If it's bare namaz, I'll start making namaz. If there's no sunnah in my life, I'll bring sunnah. We can, whatever answer we want to give. Then this person said to that majma, the brothers, I want you to listen to me. Now listen properly what I'm saying. This man is not getting 24 hours. That is Allah's sunnah. وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلًا وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَحْوِيلًا وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ Once this moth has happened, Allah is not going to bring this man alive now. But you and I in all likelihood have the next 24 hours. You and I in all likelihood have that extension that this person does not have. Now, what are you going to do with this extension? What are you going to do for the next 24 hours? The sad reality? Sad reality is what? Sad reality is this mindset of ghaflat. This mindset of negligence. What? That I still got a lot of time. I still got a lot of time. I still got a lot of time. This is shaitan's chakra. Shaitan won't tell you don't do. Shaitan is too intelligent to tell you not to do. What shaitan will do is he'll tell you, don't do it now. You still got a lot of time. Like Mala Ibrahim Devla Sahib, Dhan Barakat, he gives the example, he says that the alarm clock is set for Fajr Salah. It's set. Alarm clock goes off. At that time, even in that sleep, even in that subconscious state, this person is able to do a quick mental calculation. That if I press the snooze button, the snooze button, there's 10 minutes gap. So there's still 20 minutes for Fajr Salah. And mashallah, Imam Sahib reads very long. So I can sleep another 10 minutes and I'll still be able to get up and make wuzu quickly. I'll still make it. Even in that subconscious state, all that calculation is able to do. And he presses the snooze button and he goes back to sleep. And Allah Shah, this second sleep that he gets is sweeter than the whole night also. So when the alarm goes again, 
When the alarm now the snooze has passed, still in all likelihood he goes to press it again. What is this? This is not Shaitan saying don't do. This is Shaitan saying you've got a lot of chance. You've got a lot of chance. You've got a lot of chance. The one, the one bounty of Allah, which unfortunately majority of us are in ghaflat and negligence about, is the value of time. Time is that commodity which you can't replace. This man, moth is in front of him. Not one good deed. Absolutely desperate. There's no time, nowhere to run now. You can't turn the clock back. So what does he do as an act of absolute desperation? Rasulullah says this man said to his family, this was his wasiyah, now that death has come, he said, I am beseeching you. He says to his family in desperation, when I die, burn my body. Burn my body. Then take the ashes and crush them. Take the ashes and crumple them so that nothing remains. And then the little ashes that remain after you have crumpled it. This month of Ramadan, I'm digressing. If you look at this word, Ramadan. What does Ramadan mean? This name Ramadan, 12 months in the Islamic calendar, Muharram, Safar, Rabiul Awal, Rabiul Akhir, Jumad al-Ula, Jumad al-Akhir, Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, Shawwal, Dhul Qaada, Dhul Hijjah. These 12 names of the Islamic months. Ulama say, 11 of those names the Arabs kept. This month Ramadan, this name came down in Quran. Shahru Ramadan. Shahru Ramadan. Alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. So this name also is from Wahi. Allah selected this name. What does the word Ramadan actually mean? It comes from the root word, Arabic root word, Ramadha Yarmud, which means to burn, to burn. Now what's the link? What's the association? What's the hikmah, the wisdom behind naming this month burning or Ram Ramadha? Ramadhan means heat. There's a hadith in Mishkat Sharif where Rasulullah sallallahu said, Salatul awabeen heena tarmudul fisal. Awabin Salah, one is after Maghrib, which is more famously known. In the Baksa continent, we know that Awabin is after Maghrib. But actually, in Hadith terminology, the term Awabin also refers to Chash Salah. So Nabi Salaam said, Salatul Awabin. In other words, Chash Salah, the time of it is found in this Hadith. He said, Heena Tarmudul Fisal. This was the Shan of Habib Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That he would not speak above the heads of the people. Who is he speaking to? Speaking to desert dwellers. He's speaking to simple people. So he could have given them some <coughs> complex answer, the measurement of the sun and the direction it rises and all that. But so beautifully he brought himself right down to the level of his audience. He said, Heena tar mudul fisal. Fisal means the young animal. The young animal when its feet starts boiling. What happens in the desert? As the sun rises, the ground starts becoming hot. Then it becomes tepid, boiling hot. At what time? Round about 10, 11 o'clock. MashaAllah, those of us who've been to Harameen Sharifin, Allah keep taking us. We find they put the white marble. But by mistake, if you put your foot on the black one, what happens? You can't even place it there. Because the ground has become tepid, boiling hot. So he said, Owa bin Salah, Cha Salah is when the animals on in its hoof starts feeling the heat of the desert. In other words, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Tarmud, Tarmud, some the same word, Ramadan. So what's the link? What's the association? Allahu Akbar, one explanation the ulama give, they say hunger. Hunger creates heat physiologically, biologically, naturally. With hunger, the heat of the ma'da, of the digestive system goes up. So the analogy is this, that with each day's hunger, 
a little bit of the last 11 months sins and gunas are placed in this cauldron of heat and it is burnt and burnt and burnt and burnt and burnt so that finally when the end of Ramadan comes this person becomes sinless another explanation Allah I can give of the link Ramadan They say if you want to destroy something, you can break it. But what you break can be, you can glue it together again. You can tear something. Tear something, you can put it together again. It may not be perfect, but you can still put it up together. If you want to destroy something so that no trace remains, completely destroy it. They say the most conducive way to destroy something where no trace remains is to burn it to ashes. Ramadan, the month in which even the record of the sins of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are burned to ashes, obliterated. Ali radiallahu ta'ala used to say, لو أراد الله أن يعذب أمت محمد ما أعطاه رمضان If Allah wanted to punish the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah would not have given them this month of Ramadan. This is such a month, such an opportunity. Like I said, I digress. This person, out of desperation, says to his family, burn my body, crush the ashes, throw half over the ocean, half over the land. This was not because he did not believe in resurrection. Allahu Akbar. Look at the emphasis. Allah says, A day is coming. We will wrap up the heavens like how a writer wraps up his prose. Exactly as we created you the first time. We will resurrect you. Allah says, I take an oath upon this. I am going to resurrect you. Inna kunna fa'ileen. Inna kunna fa'ileen. Like in Urdu, we say, Is par koi shak na karo. Ye zaroor bhi zaroor ho jayega. Without a doubt, without a doubt, La tuba'athun, you will be resurrected. Down to the last proportion, that body went into the ground. It got eaten up by the insects of the grave. Those insects got eaten up by other insects. Those insects were eaten up by other insects. And then after being dispersed into millions, if not trillions of particles, with the passage of time, the earth overturned. Further dispersion till you were scattered and scattered and scattered and absolutely no trace remains. Such is the knowledge of Allah. Such is the... The manner in which Allah encompasses every facet of this creation. That Bedouin raises his hands. Ya man la tarahu al-uyun, wa la tukhalituhu al-dunun, wa la yasifuhu al-wasifun. Oh my Allah, the eyeballs cannot see you. The mind cannot imagine you. True description, let the dose of... Let let the describers of this world come together. They will never ever be able to describe you as you ought to be described. You are not affected by the movement and the ravages of time. Ya man ya'lamu. Mathaqeel al jibal. Oh may Allah. You know the weight of the mountains. Mathaqeel al jibal. Makail al bihar. You know the measure of the oceans. You know the number of the rain droplets that are falling. You know the number of the leaves on the trees of this earth. Your knowledge is such, one heaven doesn't block from you what is underneath it. One level, one stratum of the earth doesn't block from your sight and knowledge what is underneath it. 11 kilometers of water, Pacific Ocean, 
in Philippines, 11 kilometers high. What does this ordinary Bedouin in a desert 14 centuries ago say, Oh my Allah, your knowledge is such that it penetrates the depths of the ocean. The earth, it penetrates the depths of the earth. One huge creation of yours above another does not conceal from you what is underneath it. Every grain, every atom, Allah says, مَا خَلْقُكُمْ وَلَا بَعْثُكُمْ إِلَّا كَنَفْسِ وَاحِدًا To create you the first time and resurrect you again and to do this to the whole humanity and everything that exists is like creating one person for Allah. There is no difficulty in this. Don't doubt this. This is going to happen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that day is coming. Allah will resurrect this person. Allah will resurrect this person. And then Allah is going to ask him, Ma hamalaka ala ma sana. Why did you do this? What did you hope to achieve? You were going to avoid this day? Ain al mafar. La takhfa minkum khafiya. Fanfudu. La tanfudu na illa bi sultan. There are three things. Human nature. When faced with a situation, impending danger, faced with a situation where you want to escape, you have at your disposal one of three things. Either you can hide or you can run, or you can oppose. These are your three options. What does Quran say? Hide, la taqfa minkum khafiya. There's no hiding on that day. Run, ain al mafar. Allah says, where are you going to run? Oppose, fan fudu, la tanfudu na illa bi sultan. There is no question of opposing the authority of Allah. There is no escape route. That day is coming. So Allah asks him, ma khamalaka ala ma sanad. Why did you do this? Allahu Akbar, what answer does he give? Not that I hope to avoid this day. There was no escape. I knew it in my heart. He says, Lima khafatika ya Rabbi. Lima khafatika ya Rabbi. Oh my Allah. Dastan, legacy, life of disobedience. At that time, just before I could die, when the extension had almost run out, your khaf came into my heart. Khashiyat of Allah, the khawf of Allah, the consciousness of Allah. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Tirmizi Sharif Riwayat, mentions about one youngster. Vadma, 